mierda! ¡Bonita! start with this ahead of her upcoming title defense against the mandatory challenge at Danila Ramos. Amanda Serrano says, I want to show I can go 12, but with an extra minute, it might not go 12. She might stop her. That's the virtue oh. that oftentimes very strong punchers and aggressive fighters in women's boxing were deprived of knockouts because they didn't have enough time in the round to finish the job. Amanda will. It's a lot of pressure on me, but I feel for women's boxing, it's going to be big. I'm super excited to go out there and showcase women's boxing at its finest and that women can do anything we put our minds to, Serrano told Sky Sports. That'll show that we deserve it. If it was possible, Serrano would continue to compete with the longer increased number of rounds in place. For me personally, I don't want to go back to two minutes, Serrano said. It makes no sense to go backwards. So hopefully, other women are on board. They love the idea. They've been asking for it for many years now. And hopefully, this is the first step. What seems almost like an audition for 12 three-minute rounds in women's boxing matches. We know the WBC have taken a hard-line stance on this. They're being dicks. Where Amanda says she doesn't want to go back to 10 two-minute rounds, they're saying they will not sanction a women's boxing match for 12 three-minute rounds. So you see, there's going to be a problem. Could be. The mandatory she's about to satisfy is by way of the WBO. And you will notice that neither the WBO, the WBA, or the IBF are giving Amandia a hard time. They don't have a problem with her fighting for 12 three-minute rounds. So why is it the WBC is being so stubborn? Because Mauricio Suleiman fancies himself a promoter. If you think about all the shenanigans the WBC has been responsible for the last five or six years or so, a franchise belt for franchise champions. Thank God that's over. A new division between cruisier weight and heavyweight, the bridger weight division. Bridger weight. Still hasn't really gotten off the ground. What about alienating both Russian and Belarusian fighters based on the conflict between Russia and Ukraine that has nothing to do with boxing. He oversteps his bounds. Now, even though the other alphabet organizations take no issue with women fighting for 12 three-minute rounds, he is insistent that it shouldn't be allowed. He oversteps his bounds. Amanda says, this fight is hard for me because I honestly want to showcase that I'm capable of going the 12 three-minute rounds, but then again, that's an extra minute, so it might not go 12 rounds. That's saying that because of the additional minute, it'll be that much harder on her opponent, Danila Ramos of Brazil, to stand up to her. Amanda's long had a world-class engine, and she's a volume puncher. She can throw punches and bunches from the opening round to the final round. If you tack on an additional minute to each round, that's trouble. As women, we have to fight inch by inch to earn the same equity and respect freely awarded to men. In our sport, we have made progress, but there is still far to go. For too long, we have been underpromoted and undercompensated. This has finally started to change as all of us have proven that women's boxing captures the attention of sports fans and creates moments the world will never forget. And we create these moments despite how rarely we are afforded the same time and opportunity to showcase our skills as our male counterparts. That is why today we stand together with the desire and dedication to have the choice 
to perform on the same stage with the same rules as men in professional boxing. We have earned the choice of three minute rounds with 12 rounds for championship fights to demonstrate our skill and greatness. We have earned the choice to build a more equal future for fighters everywhere. We hope boxing stakeholders support us as we have supported them throughout our careers. This is how our fight, our right, and our choice we are boxing. You will see in the image featured here a good number of current champions, former champions, retired fighters, all familiar faces. Anyone from Ann Wolf to Layla Ali to Michaela Mayer to Sinicia Estrada, Heather Hardy, Christina Hammer, Chantel Cameron, Sarah Mafood, Maricela Cornejo, Christy Martin, Layla McCarter, both Evelyn and Daniela Bermudez, Mayra Moneo, Ali Holmes, Jean Deja Green, Ramla Ali, Miriam Gutierrez, Franchon Cruz, Natasha Jonas, several, several others. All showing up, showing out, and showing their support for 12 three-minute rounds in women's boxing, which speaks to my previous suggestion that enough of the fighters and enough of the champions, if they stand up to the WBC, they may not leave them with much of a choice. Forming a collective that speaks out unanimously in one voice for 12 three-minute rounds. That's how you do it. If enough of the fighters get on board, that won't leave the WBC with much of a choice. They will cross that bridge when we get to it. In this situation, the best way to sell 12 three-minute rounds in women's boxing matches is by ensuring that it doesn't last that long, ensuring that it doesn't go the distance. Take it out of the judge's hands and knock Danilo Ramos out. That's how you sell it. We'll see what happens. Men's super middleweight news. Bob Arum says Canelo wipes the floor with Crawford. Crawford can't hurt Canelo, but Canelo can hurt him. So some people feel about it. Bob Arum would know something about it. Terrence Crawford became who he became on Bob Arum's watch under the top rank banner. I think Canelo wipes the floor with him. I love Crawford. I told you with Crawford and Spence that Crawford would beat the hell out of him. But Canelo is a different proposition. I think it's an interesting fight, but I think there's only one winner. I agree that it's an interesting fight, but I think that a lot of people struggle with the idea that Canelo is an elite fighter, that Canelo is in fact one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world. I think people don't grasp the gravity of this proposition. They don't. Infighting has already started between the two factions of fans, the Canelo fans and the Crawford fans, those who want to believe that because Canelo's not receptive to this idea, that he's afraid of Terrence and he's ducking Terrence. It's already started. Like I said, I think it's an intriguing fight, but I'm not as dismissive of the risks to Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford, 36 years old, who has never boxed above the welterweight limit of 147 pounds. The Omaha, Nebraska native dominated Errol Spence in their welterweight title unification fight July 29th at the T-Mobile Arena, yet Aram views the weight difference between him and Alvarez as entirely too much of a disadvantage for Crawford. Canelo is used to fighting at a particular level, and I don't think Terrence can hurt Canelo, but Canelo can hurt Terrence. I mean, we have seen Terrence Crawford comparatively. We have seen him rattled a little bit more than we've seen Alvarez rattled. We saw Terrence rattled by Gamboa at 135 pounds, arguably knocked down by Igis Kavalyauskas at 147, whereas Canelo Alvarez at either 154, 160, 168, 175. He's been in there with very big men, big punchers, though I can seldom ever recall him being hurt. As far as Crawford is concerned, at this point, only one thing is important, and that's the money. You can't blame him, and you look around, who does Canella have to fight? Crawford is probably the most attractive fight, commercially, I'm saying. Even though he's coming up three weight classes, people would have a lot of interest. More, I think, than what they just showed in the Jermel Charlo fight. The Jermel Charlo fight did all right. Somewhere in between 600 and 700,000 pay-per-view buys. I think Canelo could 
and would do more than that with Terrence, though is Terrence really cut out for this fight? Demetrius Andre doesn't seem to think so. Demetrius, ahead of his upcoming fight with David Benavidez, warns Crawford on traveling to 168 saying, don't come up here and get fucked up. Demetrius seems a bit more pessimistic about Crawford's climb than some others, where Clarissa Shields thinks that Canelo is ducking Terrence Crawford. Demetrius says, that's my boy, but don't come up here and get fucked up. It's a big difference. It's a big difference. Three weight classes. But Terrence, you know, Terrence ain't talking about a full-on campaign at 168 pounds. He's talking about a Canelo Alvarez fight. And I suppose what separates that fight from some other fights that he might have with some other super middleweights is that Canelo's not that big. He's not that tall. He's not that long. Just in terms of the tail of the tape. Not the tail of the weight, but the tail of the tape. Canelo is not as statuesque as some other fighters, doesn't have the same wingspan, and given Crawford's base style, is it possible that he could work around him? He is a more fleet of foot fighter, faster on his feet than Canelo Alvarez. With better feet than a Jermel Charlo, whose movement is, is quite basic and limited to creating space and or retreating. Jermel Charlo, for all his virtues, is not as nuanced a fighter as Terence Crawford, and it's for this reason that some people like his chances. I understand that. But don't be so dismissive of Canelo. Demetrius Andre doesn't want to be flippant. Crawford is a great fighter. Andre has acknowledged that several times over, but you know the old saying, skills pay the bills. There's a lot of truth in that. However, skills and abilities are thrown out the window when you step in the ring with someone who weighs significantly more than you. Think back to the Jorge Linares versus Pablo Cano fight at 140 pounds. From a nuts and bolts perspective, Jorge Linares is a better boxer, more fundamentally sound, more skilled than a Pablo Cano, and more decorated. Jorge was a three-division champion. He was trying to become a champion at a fourth weight. And he couldn't get past the journeyman. He could not get past a journeyman in Pablo Cano. Not because Pablo's so good, but because Pablo was so big. So much bigger than him. He's got the skills, but there's skilled fighters up there. Plus, we'll be able to bully him at the end of the day, said Demetrius Andre. Though Terrence, Terrence ain't going up there for Benavidez. He's not going up there for Andre to Morel, any of those other people. He's going up there, he wants to, for one guy. One guy specifically. And fighting him is a little different than fighting one of them. Because he is a lot smaller. He is a lot shorter than those guys. So what you have to ask yourself is, do you think that Terrence Crawford can neutralize Canelo Alvarez's power for 12 rounds and box from the outside. Long and loose behind the jab from the outside to a points decision. Do you think he can do it? I don't know. It's likely what Demetrius Andre is going to have to do very soon in November. The fight between him and David Benavidez has been officially announced as a Showtime pay-per-view set to go down in Vegas on November 25th, the weekend of Thanksgiving. Demetrius Andre has spent enough time talking about Terrence Crawford venturing to the super middleweight division. He's in the process of that himself. He's only had one fight as a super middleweight. And he didn't look great. Similar situation for both, though one situation is not as broad a leap as the other. Demetrius, he moved up one weight class, whereas Crawford, he'd be moving up three. But the assignment is similar. Working around the other guy's size and power. That's what Demetrius Andre has to try to do with David Benavidez in November. Can he do it? I've said it many times that David is a very basic, a very basic come forward pressure guy. There's not much to him. The only elite quality I see he has, it's not his jab or his shot selection. It's not even his power. It's his engine, his ability to outlast his opponents, to keep throwing punches in bunches from the opening round to the final round. Demetrius being some years older than David Benavidez and less acclimated to this weight. Yeah, you kind of have to favor David. He's basic. Though he is bigger, younger, and he does have the right base style for the job. Edge goes to David. And that fight is going to be billed as a box office fight, yeah. a pay-per-view, much to the chagrin of some, some, as will this fight, the circus fight between Tyson Fury, the boxer, and Francis Ngannou, the mixed martial artist. It seems like the people at Top Rank and Queensbury held off on announcing this official price point mm -hmm. until the last minute, 
It's listed as $79.99 to watch a boxer box a guy that doesn't box. I don't know who's interested in seeing this, but I'm not. The whole point of taking in either a boxing match or a UFC fight, a mixed martial arts fight, is to watch two guys, two quality operators two. that know what they're doing, go at it. And here, uh. that's definitely not the case because Francis Ngannou is not a boxer. No. no amateur background, no professional experience. None. He's not a boxer. So what are you really paying for in this economy, all this inflation? You're going to pay $80 to see Tyson Fury box a guy who doesn't box? I'm not going to poo-poo all over the event and say that it won't make any money, that no one will buy it. I'm just saying from the perspective of a lifelong boxing fan, there's very little. It's nothing. There's no reason for me to buy this. I get better, more interesting, intriguing matchups than this that don't cost $80. Take this weekend's fights between Tim Zhu and Brian Mendoza at Junior Middle, the unification match at Middle between Yanni Bekalem Kanalai and Vincenzo Gualtieri. No, those fights don't have the profile that this one does, but... But you're looking at two boxers. You're looking at two actual pugilists going at it. Not a mixed martial artist who's looking for a payday and a boxer who's trying to stay on easy street because that's what this is. Mm -hmm. You pay in the hopes you're going to see a competitive fight. You're paying for that competitive element. And why would a mixed martial artist with no experience in boxing be competitive against the boxer and not just any boxer a reigning world champion an unbeaten one why what is this amateur hour why would i pay to see that why you know all of the mystique that surrounded that conversation in previous years the boxer versus the mixed martial artist all of the mystique was dispelled the moment that floyd mayweather fought conor mcgregor yeah i mean if you've been following this channel long enough i said it then it's a common sense argument. No matter how good Conor McGregor is at his respective sport, he's not a boxer. He's not going to have a boxer's muscle memory and instincts as a boxer because he's not a boxer. You can be good at baseball, great at baseball. Doesn't give you a jump shot. There are differences, and it's a different sport. So needless to say, they won't be getting my money on this one. And I'm no penny pincher. I purchased several pay-per-views throughout the calendar year, but this one will not be one of them. Nope. Now, they already announced the Oleksandr Yusik fight as being signed, sealed, and delivered. And we do have confirmation from both sides, from both teams. Though a part of me feels like the reason. The reason they made that announcement, the reason they did it without a fight date. Because there's still no fight date. The reason they announced the fight without an actual fight date was to help sell this fight, this circus fight with Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou. It's got to be built up for something. You have to give people something to look forward to, and they have that to look forward to, the fight with Usyk. Thank God. Now, I don't know what this circus fight is going to do commercially. I can't tell you that I, I personally, have an appetite for it, and it's hard to imagine that any true blue boxing fan would. Maybe it does good numbers in the UK as a pay-per-view, because that's where most of Tyson Fury fans are. Of course, supporters. Though here in America, I don't imagine it's going to do all that well. Tough sell. I mean, when's this going down? In the afternoon. Those are not prime time hours for a pay-per-view. Not in America. Not when you think about it. And how many Americans really want to see Tyson Fury box Francis and Ghana? We know it's going to happen. Everybody knows. There's no mystery. No mystique. I've read this book before. We all have. It's set to go down later on this month towards the end of it on the 28th. If you're interested. But I'm not. 